All right, it is time for a book review of L'Amour d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory. Oh my goodness gracious. I finally made it through this 800 page saga of Arthurian legends <laughs> written in Middle English. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Sometimes I go, I wonder, sometimes I wonder why I poke, pick the books that I picked to read. This book actually, when I looked at it afterwards, I realized it's not on any of my lists. It's actually predates the current lists I'm working through. Um, I don't, I, I love Arthurian legend. I love myths and legend. I, I love Arthurian tales, uh, mostly in film format. Um, but why, why I wanted to read this book, this 800 page book that was written in 1485. <sighs> Sometimes it's hard to it's hard to remember but I do when I think about it I do know that for me a lot of what I like is going to the source or as close to the source as possible and this definitely is sort of like the oldest one of the two I can't I couldn't find the other one one of the two oldest texts about King Arthur and I wanted to you know go to the source and I had this sort of romantic idea of really you know, getting into it and really understanding it and, and it being this really great experience. And it's like, it's not really what happened. You know, I did work really hard on it. It's funny, when I originally started reading it, I was very intentional and I looked up words when I didn't understand them. And I really worked hard at trying to understand what was going on. And at some point I had to let that go a little bit because I realized, you know what, I'm never going to make it through this book if I stop every time I don't understand what's going on. And there's also, on the flip side to that, there's so much repetition. You know, like, they talk about doing something, they do something, they talk about what they did, and there's so much smoting. Everyone gets smote down. Smote down, smote down, smote down. I randomly picked three passages from the book, literally just let it fall open, and the three, two of the three had smoting going on, which is basically fighting, like striking someone down. But I always think of it as a little more like epic, a little more sort of biblical, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's what paladins do. Anyway, so too much gaming. So, but <laughs> coming back to it, after a while, I sort of had to reassess you know, what's, what's my goal here? What is my desire here? I do have the, like, there's a sort of like you know, I do want to understand the stories. I do want to appreciate the stories. I want to know more about the characters, especially characters that, you know, that you don't often hear as much about. Like, I realize I know this, the, the origin story of Arthur. I know that one. I know the story of Excalibur. I know the love triangle story. And I know the Lady of the Lake story and a little bit. That one I could always know more about. But those ones I knew. But, like, what are more about other Knights, Pelinor, Bedivere, Boars, G Gawain, you know, um, Galahad, uh, those stories are ones that I wanted to know more of. Now, this actually does have a fair amount on particular knights. There's a fair amount on Tristan, uh, like a lot uh, actually on him, and a lot, of course, on Lancelot, which he gets covered in a lot of the different books. Although I do have some challenges, especially with all the smoting down, because they talk about different knights at different times being the best, right? Like that, Lan it always feels like Lancelot's the best, but it's like, isn't Tristan the best? You know, they both seem to be the best, but of course, Arthur has to be the best because he's the king. So maybe it's just people being really wanting to be the best and a focus of that being important or something. I don't know. I'm trying to remember if Tristan and Lancelot ever fought. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. That being said, this it was an epic endeavor <laughs> to take on this book. It was a test of endurance. It was a test of realigning my goals over time. Um, I originally had started out reading it as a book to take a, like, to have a little break. I would just take, sort of, I would read one chapter because they're very short and it would take sort of like five minutes. Um, and then that was sort of my pace for reading it for quite a long period of time. And then at some point I discovered, you know what, I'm not going to understand this completely right now. I'm not going to do it. The language is too hard. It will take too long if I decide to look everyone up, everything up. So I decided just to trust it and just sort of just to keep on reading and just to keep with it and keep on reading. And so I would really sit down for a good 
hour and a half and just keep reading. Even if I didn't understand it, I would just keep on going. And one of the weird things that happens is happened is, although I didn't understand this book all that much at certain points, there's certain stories that stand out and certain stories that have greater meaning and things that pop up that I remember. But what happened is my general reading got a lot better. <laughs> it's kind of like this sideways osmosis magic. Other books that I found challenging started to make more sense. <laughs> so it had this great effect on my reading in general, even though reading it itself was not the best, most interesting, or, you know, or, or I was going to say rewarding experience, but that's not true. It was a really rewarding experience, but understanding it, I went into the, the, it with the goal of understanding it and appreciating it. This having this romantic notion of just understanding all of the characters and their, their stories and permutations in Arthurian legend. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. I, you know, I have greater understanding of Arthur and Lancelot and Tristan and probably that's about it. But, um, and I know the Guinevere Lancelot story a lot better with this one. I find that it's actually, it's odd because when I read it in another book later, it was literally exactly the same. Whereas when I see it in some different places, it's interpreted differently. Not like the specifics, not the love triangle element, but the specifics. So that's, the, you know, so that's interesting too. So, and it lets me know that what I want to know is more about the individual knights and more about their story. So if I go to continue on to reading more myths and legends about Arthurian legends, then that is something that I will keep an eye out for and not just the story of Arthur, which is a great story in and of itself. But it's very, I, and how did I not know this? It's also very religious. So for me, that's not as interesting. And of course, there are not tons of women characters other than Guinevere and um, Morgan, uh, Morgan Le Fay and Nemu, who is a very, she's been, but not, not very much. And of course, magic is looked down on. I, I should have known that from watching Merlin for crying out loud. <laughs> it was actually funny to go back and watch some of Merlin after reading this, because you, there are definitely a lot of connections, but they take a lot of liberties too. But more so I'm interested on the particular nights, their stories, their, the characteristics you would associate which e with each of the characters, each of the knights, what their individual stories are. That's still something I want to know more about and something I felt like I wasn't super getting from this text. Not that it's not there, it's just really hard to get at it with all the repetition, all of the smoting. Let me just, let me just get one of these smote examples. That's, here we go. Okay, so book nine, chapter 23. And this will also give you a sense of the language. <laughs> at, an, at the next landing, fast by the sea, there met Sir Tristram with Sir Dinadam, Sir Ector de Mays, and Sir Bors de Ganis. And there Sir Ector jousted with Sir Dinadam and smote him and his horse down. And then Sir Tristram, who would have jousted with Sir... Mm, where are Sir Bors... And Sir Bors said that he would not joust with no Cornish knights, for they were not called men of worship, and this was done upon a bridge. So that language, very challenging, definitely had some smoting. And Bors, Bors, jeez. So funny, because for me, it's like I have strong associations with the some of the knights from the... Um, film version of King Arthur with Clive Owen and uh, Mads Mikkelsen and i um, trying to think of who plays Boris. Oh, I just love him. I just love him. And I really love the characters and act, the actors portrayals of the characters and that. So for me, it's like the, 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 how I felt, how strongly I felt about that was hoping what I was hoping to get from reading about this, but it's not, it was miles and miles difference in terms of an experience. That said, I am happy I read it. It does feel like an accomplishment to have read, read an 800 page book that's in Middle English. I'm not going to deny the fact that for me, that in and of itself feels good as an accomplishment, even if I didn't understand it all. It did increase my reading comprehension. It clarified what I'm interested in when I'm looking into Arthurian legends. And it also reminded me that I like myths and legends 
generally and since then i had been i have been reading more mythology um i've read the iliad i've read the odyssey and i've read a book of irish folk tales as well as a book on norse mythology and those are stories that i love there's something really interesting in them and you don't always have to go to them in a really hard text like i think one or one or two of the um ones i read were like kind of more like kids picture books and that's a great way to enjoy the story and for sure if I understood these stories that like just like 100% I could write a kid's book but I'm not there I also listened to an audio book read by Sean Bean that was so good for and I read it after I, I listened to it after I read this and it was just so nice to have something understandable and enjoyable and read by Sean Bean and it was just a very very pleasant experience so it was a journey it was a journey it was a journey that I'm glad I went on, and I'm glad that I reassessed my, my goals midway through. Would I recommend reading the book <laughs> after all that? You know, it's up to you. It's, you know, with any book, it's why do you want to read it? Um, and, and you know, for me, the accomplishment, it was big. Uh, the journey was an experience. I, would I do it again? Probably. I probably would do it again. Um, maybe things a little different, but it made my overall reading comprehension uh, greatly improve. And, and that's, that is a beautiful thing. That's a wonderful thing. That's something that I, you know, use every day and have been able to read other texts like the Odyssey and War and Peace. And that's something I value. So, you know, what we get from something isn't always what we think we're going to get from something. So it's sometimes it's worth it to stick with it. So, and I'm glad that I did. So I would love to hear if you have any recommendations for Arthurian legends, especially about the knights, um, you know, and their stories, because I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for them. So until then, thank you so much for watching.